for the past 30 days samsung employees have been sitting on an indefinite protest with their set of demands and now the protest has escalated to talk about this i have with me justice k chandru before i go across to him here is a quick reminder news minute news minute tamil and news laundry we are a complete ad free platform we are not dependent on any government ads ads from political parties or corporates we are completely dependent on you so if you like our work and if you want us to continue this do support the news minute and news laundry become a paid subscriber and support independent journalism sir uh, thank you so much for uh, talking to us uh, what is your take on uh, the tamil nadu government handling uh, the samsung employees protest the issue can't be seen only in the context of uh, samsung uh, workers alone one has to see for the last uh, six decades the labor policy of the state government in, in especially in tamil nadu and unless uh, you go through that it is something like a blueprint of what happened earlier there is a definite shift in the uh, dravidian parties uh, in their approach to labor for the first time in 1967 when the dmk won again defeating the congress one of the election platform was uh, the anti labor policy of the congress so at that time the dmk did not have a trade union wing of their own and when anathore formed the government and uh, they were totally um, uh, i would say um, uh, not having any definite uh, stand on the issue i remember in 1968 when a uh, pen factory workers chel park pen factory workers in redils they were in a stay in strike for their demands then the management called for a police then uh, uh, police local police were told not to interfere in the um, industrial dispute it's purely between management and the workers this was the stand of the government the that chief, was the dmk government no, at that no, time yeah another another hmm. was the chief minister okay. then the uh, company went to the high court and it was heard by a judge uh, justice krishna mirdi before the high court the the public prosecutor told the government, the court that this is purely a industrial dispute our police will not go then the madras high court ruled that when when workers are protesting outside is okay they are protesting inside the factory compound which belong to the management beyond the working hours they can't stay it's amount to encroachment therefore remove them so the first um, anti worker order came from the high court at that time the strong statement made by anathore government was they will not send police to interfere in a industrial dispute this was the first tone i remember the the second incident in the same year in 1968 there were two other incident first incident was kilgarmani hmm. when 44 um, uh, scheduled caste workers were burned to death the demand was for 25 paise increase per day wage even to deny that the landowners formed an association and tried to set fire then the police were strictly given orders that they that shall not take sides on this issue even though there were demand from congress that the police are taking sides there were two reasons one was in the 67 anti congress platform cpm was a strong ally to the dmk and there were 17 mlas elected at that time there was a very strong force so in the assembly uh, anathore told uh, the leader that uh, whatever that you think i should do i do because this is something which can never be allowed this kind of a, a burning what mm. were persons have got so at the request of the cpm for the east tanjavur agriculture fair wages commission was appointed because uh, they under the presidentship of one retired judge of the high court ganapathy appellate commission which recommended separate fair, fair wage for the east tanjavur okay so the east tanjavur laborers are getting more wage so if you see in 1968 the policy was definitely not to take a stand on this and it left the issue to be resolved and the shift came after anathore's demise when kalangar took over two two definite shift was to start their own labor wing that is how the lpf was lpf born. dmk's lpf second was not to be just neutral try to actively intervene possible and wherever they have a union take a side and that union will help Uh, to resolve the issue so this is something 
you will find a series of issues starting from simpson aravangad police firing harbor firing so the um, the 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 uh, the shift was felt very acute in 1971 in the parliament the dmk opposed the introduction of maintenance of internal security act misa huh. but nevertheless misa they supported in the uh, saying that we will not use against uh, political leaders but 1971 when with the congress they came to power for the second time with a brutal majority first thing they invoked uh, misa was against the trade union leaders of madras hmm. chintan kuchailar haribat parameswaran all of them were put under misa so the question was asked how misa can be used against trade union leaders yeah, in a, an act which authorizes detention without trial so this is how uh, slowly the process was shifting towards a management stand so they were trying to say that uh, citu is creating unemployment citu is using uh, closure because citu was born in 1971 so citu was emerging as a one of the leading force in the uh, so this was probably the, in fact i was one of the i myself suffered in mrf and there was 100 day strike the strike was banned then 144 imposed in trivitur that nobody should enter the at that time i defied and spoke among the workers i was arrested and kept in madras central jail for 15 days for a violation of section 41 of the city police act so speaking among the workers banned the continuance of the strike is banned collective bargaining never recognized and the matters are if at all sent to uh, court so when uh, uh, when 1974 for the first time when dmk started feeling that uh, the congress is not going to be very happy with them so the railway strike became the new starting point where dmk had to take a political stand that all india uh, trade union issues they have to take a definite stand 74 did not last long though it had a impact hmm. on the congress government 75 emergency came and uh, madras was slightly better they didn't use all the um, harsh laws till kalinger was in power and kalinger was dismissed on 1st february 1976 things were very bad when janata party came mgr was the chief minister so you must see the difference when mgr became chief minister again the same thing like anathur it started tvs workers were on strike in party then uh, they were trying to bring gundas from outside to attack the uh, workers who formed the union when this was came to light mgr was speaking in a meeting of sugar technologies uh, in 1978 he told in the meeting that if the management use excessive force or gundaism outside force basically uh, bring gundas, people uh, outside uh, then we will not send our police uh. so he withdrew the police from the compound of the tvs at that time muraji desai was influenced by uh, congress who party he sent crpf so tvs had a central force mm. to deal with the workers situation so this was the initial stand of uh, uh, mgr but later uh, they also had their own trade union wing and started uh, acting as appendix so the main issue was two things during kalinger period and mgr period there were laws which were progressive and uh, which is a unique not in any north indian hmm. state it was unique but so far as law is concerned it's different but when it comes to actual uh, issue when there is actual strike removal of pandal banning meetings banning processions and then banning the strike everything was uh, in, a, in a progressive order it used to be brought in like that okay so, it's the same template that happened in the past it's yeah, happening so now the, from 1970 till now the policy evolved by the successive state government was when a strike comes talk initiate talks with the labor department if the talks fail then try to ban the strikes if the strikers try to take out uh, public rallies ban it by section 41 saying that no progress i know in 1972 73 lakhs of workers were arrested and kept in jail for no reason because we moved bails in thousands of cases mm. for uh, just for provoking processions and then conditions will be imposed there are in one case the transport workers uh, the conditions are imposed that they should stay in kanyakumari hmm. where is the money to stay in kanyakumari so they, 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 it was very harsh 
and the court was also taking a very uh, very very proactive stand in supporting status quo and management uh, positions so we never had but positively um, there is a battery of lawyers in the madras high court who were used to take only workers matters they were able to resist at least the court uh, taking a proactive stand in supporting the management but so far as the government labor department is concerned it was continuously the same stand i could imagine that when k a krishna swami was also the uh, milk production minister and also the minister for law, uh, labor even mgr government mm. on one day strike they dismissed 1800 workers in avin and then their case was not also sent to court okay it's not a case of strike mm. it was a case of one day token strike 1800 dismissed when they want to go to court they say refuse because the same man k a krishna swami is also the minister for milk, milk production so the court interfered and sent that matter and finally after some 20 year battle they won the case but it is not winning the case in court today if workers never want to go to court for two reasons okay no case will ever finish within 25 years period the L- labor, labor labor cases labor you cases. say hmm. the labor department takes one year to send the case to court the labor court takes to 2 to 3 years to finish the case the high court takes 5 uh, years to finish in a single judge then another 10 years before division bench and in case it goes to supreme court another 5 years so today the madras high court is hearing the cases of labor matters which are filed in the year 2003 hmm. imagine at 21 years why should the worker wait what happened to the family what happened to their um, their own uh, surrounding so the except the leading um, uh, organized workers the smaller industries msme industries they don't believe in court the leading union they don't believe in court because for two reasons the leading unions have uh, what is called craft unions all over india single union cement coal hmm. like that railways so they are able to banks they are able to insurance they were able to bargain something across the table and then get something never go to court that is their policy but so far as the middle and small industries never go to court because you will never get justice hmm. so the court option is not the correct option at viable all viable option for the uh, for, for, for the worker employees. either for here worker. in tamil nadu or anywhere else okay how the talking the... about this uh, samsung protest sir no, one, one more thing, thing i want yes, to yes, tell sir, you that uh, in the same policy uh, when jailalta came it became much worse for example in 2002 she dismissed 200000 government employees hmm. in one stroke one stroke never nowhere in india such a thing has happened all that because they went on a strike on that particular day who were on strike they will be removed deemed to have been removed hmm. so we had a big fight up to supreme court and some people came to so the, the and she also brought in essential service act hmm. to uh, esma aras people the things were so bad after we lost the case in madras high court there was not even a single person to come forward to file an appeal hmm. imagine 200000 workers have lost but one appeal no person was willing to sign the affidavit because they were scared fear, fear. ha huh. and tk rangarajan a marxist M- mp he signed the petition so when the matter came to the supreme court supreme court asked you how he is not an employee government employee how is he filing no the situation is so bad not even a single person is willing to come the supreme court was shocked by that people even doesn't want to go as an option mm-hmm. as a legal option finally it is tk rangarajan case everybody got a job that is true i am saying continuously the policy is not just neutral policy is not what another is said before uh, the, uh, when he was in power as chief minister that our police will never go the policy is that what is set after 70 police will actively implement uh, intervene they will remove the pandals put in front of factories they will remove the flag which is raised therein they will destroy the name board the labor department will not recognize a majority union and then the registration of union will become so difficult that fundamental right to form a union will be very bad this is the first situation second situation came due to the liberalization and foreign investment globalization i do not know the poor people were deprived of their land for example in sri parambudur on the sipkat acquirement on the green airport 23 villages were removed 
people have become a stateless person Parandur. in the the amount fixed for compensation was 400 rupees per cent the sub court gave 4000 rupees government came on appeal so i have has heard i have disposed of some 500 cases on the same issue i uh, i have asked the government one question that when you take 4000 rupees for which you have filed appeal you are selling it to all the foreign companies korean companies to 40000 rupees per acre mm. what is the, what is the justification that you make the people here unemployed landless no compensation no rehabilitation and then the lands are gone now how do you justify this and there is one issue second issue was that the foreign companies have been given some kind of an assurance that the labor laws will not be applied no that's what i wanted to ask so you I, in one case uh-huh. you know in the uh, the glass factory in uh, sri parambudur the, the the they in, they themselves told the labor commissioner we were told that they will not have a union mm-hmm. i said who ever gave this to them and there are two cases came to the madras high court the management doesn't want a union flag in front of their factory in ranipet oh. that case came to the madras high so one question in in do chemicals when the do chemicals filed a suit before me asking the workers not to agitate that do chemical was the successor of uh, union car mm. i refused to grant entry order in my order i also wrote that let not these foreign companies think that the indian labor laws do not apply to them it applies to them as much as apply to any other indian companies let not the government think there is no law for them they have been exempted it is not a landless lawless situation but it's a situation where completely issues are governed and nobody gets exempted from these laws okay this is in my so, order so in this case uh, you know in even in samsung's case what uh, the company says is that they can have an union but it should be an internal union it should be a workers committee it can't be a samsung india employees this union this is a standard union the standard uh, argument brought in by simpson uh, tvs several other companies in the 70s hmm. that internal leadership hmm. so when the central government set up workers education scheme where they used to teach the workers on the industrial relations one of the lesson was how to develop local leadership hmm. how to avoid outsiders so our argument was in 1925 and 26 when the uh, when the um, trade union act was enacted just before that the bini company the buckingham carnatic hmm. mills they um, they went to the civil court and got uh, 2000 pounds compensation from the trade union and then excommunicated the trade union leader i guess that in that background when the trade union act was enacted it provided for outside leadership because most of the leaders who are trade union leaders were once originally once upon a leader victimized by the management and therefore today the trade union act provides for 10% uh, outside leadership and it has proved to be very um, uh, very effective. salutary because hmm. yeah, very effective it is yeah, salutary because otherwise trade union movement would not have grown at all hmm. they would have killed everybody in that sense it need a complicated issue like bonus uh, workload or work norms or dns allowance cost of price index you need to have understanding that the ordinary worker who is holding spanner and uh, screw driver he may not be able to know this an iti person or a or a polytechnic uh, diploma holder he may not know the nuances of law mm. he need guidance mm. and therefore world over outside leadership is something which is always granted never accepted the only outside leaders are prohibited was if there is a minister in the mm. cabinet he cannot be union leader but contrary to that during admk period the minister jakayan was the leader of the admk state transport union okay so mm. there though there is a legal prohibition but but never this was questioned so if a foreign company comes says internal leadership what is the internal leadership the industrial disputes act provides two contingency work committee mm. suppose floor level differences it can be solved by the workers there is a four level leadership but it is going to be uh, issues relating to their uh, their existence their conditions of service their workload their wage all this has to be solved outside yes. and it requires several precedents you may not you may not uh, believe 
there are as many as some 4,000 Supreme Court judgments and about 40,000 High Court judgments. How does any worker know about all these things? It's a very specialized job. Even some of the labor court judges who come from civil court, they used to tell us it requires specialization. Hmm. In Maharashtra and Gujarat, there is a specialized labor judiciary. Only in other states, they have civil judges coming there. It, it requires like tax, like uh, customs, like any other field. It's also a specialized field. It requires a lot of nuances. If you don't know the nuances, you may lose. So bargaining, collective bargaining. Collective bargaining is across the table hmm. where they agree there is a give and take. Suppose the matter goes to court, hmm. then it is not collective bargaining. It is a, it's a, it's a matter of argument on hmm. law, hmm. which requires a greater amount of uh, understanding of the labor law. Now, you made an interesting observation uh, saying that the foreign multinational companies, they have given a promise by the government that they will not be, there will not be any unions in the company. Yes. This is, this is told to me when I was there in front of the labor commissioner, one of the Korean company asked the commissioner, at that time when we started the factory, you had promised us there will not be any union. Hmm. And he was taken aback. And then uh, they could not even deny. And in their correspondence, they said, we did not expect any unions when we started this project. So okay. this is something shocking to us because it has never been said in the last 100 years. Now, when you no. have, uh, like, see, when there is this argument on social media after the Samsung protest, they say that uh, because of unions, several companies have left the country, they have gone to some other place and all that. Uh, is this a standard narrative against uh, uh, trade there unions? Always, there are the two things are always hmm. said. When the British sent first the Royal Labour Commission in 1929, the Royal Commission reported to the British Parliament that the things in India are so bad, at the same time, we are not uh, suggesting any protection for legislation, but you should guarantee the workers to form union so that that by itself can build their conditions of service. This was the recommendation. They didn't want new laws to come in to support them, but then their unionization itself will bring them together to demand certain demands. So from 1930, there was no labor laws at all. It was simply some uh, namesake labor laws. Is only in 1947 when the Industrial Disputes Act was enacted and several legislation came after 1970, after mm -hmm. independence. That is because Congress party has promised the workers they will bring in social welfare measures. But after the law came in, the question was, does the law recognize collective bargaining? Mm -hmm. The demand of the workers was only collective bargaining. That was also recommended by British uh, Royal Commission mm -hmm. of Labor. Only collective bargaining can raise their industrial, um, their conditions of service. Now, the first victim was that collective bargaining. We are having courts. If you any talks fail, go to court. And court, you know, hmm. 25 years. And in fact, uh, Justice Krishnayar has given a report, uh, Processual Justice to the People, the 1973 Krishnayar Bhagavadi report. They found during the period of 1965 to 1970, 90% of the appeals were filed by employers and 90% were dismissed by the Supreme Court. And it only leads to the conclusion that the courts are made use of by the management to delay worker getting a uh, benefit. So the, the workers are made to lose faith. It's only because the system does not deliver goods in a, in a fixed time. So it makes no sense at all. So in this case, the Tamil Nadu government is refusing to re register the union. That is they what say saying. that uh, Samsung is opposing it. Can I'll Samsung you, do that? I'll tell you, under 191C, 191A oh. and 191B of the constitution, there is a fundamental right to form an association. Whether it includes trade union that was accepted by the Supreme Court in 1965 in the All India Bank Employee Association, it is a fundamental right to form a union. Whether to recognize the union or not, there is only laws relating to recognition in Bombay, in, in Maharashtra and Gujarat. There is no compulsory recognition. The no, company, the, law. the company can recognize or they, they, they cannot recognize, but, but they, they cannot form. oppose. They can never form the registration only with the labor ah, department. They cannot, they cannot oppose somebody forming a, a union. In fact, there are two safeguards. Ah. First, the safeguard is seven people apply to the union for registration. During that period, if the management comes to know, many times the labor department will hmm. inform these hmm. are the people who filed the petition. They will try to force them. So the law says. During the period in which the uh, incubation period where the petition application is being considered, if anybody resigns, hmm. 
it's it's still it is not invalidate the application okay that is the law okay and yeah. secondly there is no there is no uh, discretion vested to the labor court to refuse a union right. in fact now they say under the union act they must represent 10% of the workforce that's right. all so there are 1000 workers 100 workers can form a union previously it was 7 now 100 workers are required that 100 workers are required not just at the time of registration even after registration and every every year the unions file a e form return mm. giving the list of members subscription paid they show the accounts all that is there now that will prove that the labor department watching which union is uh, growing which is union is declining so they can always advise they have an advisory role mm. there was a tripartite conference where the uh, labor management and the government have formed a committee so the tripartite labor committee can recommend a reg- recognition of the union also so labor commissioner recommendation is acceptable by the management so today it is uh, that is a voluntary issue but compulsory is a registration which is automatic they know they know that is why for the first, this, time, the, for the this, first time for the first time this happens in tamil nadu ah that the department is just uh, dragging its feet even from giving registration well, why are they doing it may, that is why i'm saying there may be an unwritten understanding which i've been saying for the last 40 years they must have promised them several things which is un, not on right the government must have promised uh, that there won't thing. be any union we will protect you uh, without a union I, i have seen some of the uh, korean companies saying no union but but the lie which people now say that samsung national Era, or, uh, workers union in uh, korea hmm. is one of the strongest union so in their own mother country they can have a union but in the place where there are investment they can't be union they where there are laws to ensure that there is a union they can't have our laws are 100 years old oh. that's uh, I, i think uh, the present government is dragging its feet on three grounds one hmm. is not able to handle the issue not able to reveal what was the secret understanding on this investment number 3 trying to use the police to uh, uh, weaken the bargaining power of the workers the workers can protest workers can have a small bundle so imagine from 1968 when another another told madras high court we will not send our police and now you think that at the drop of hat there is a police and union leaders are midnight arrests are reason. happening and even minister says no 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 they are not uh, they have not uh, the protest is not legal hmm. what is legal a protest is a protest There's nothing legal about it. That's why I'm saying uh, you should have a clear labor policy. Now, when Modi government wants to bring new labor laws and enacted a law in 2019, they are not notified the law last four years mm-hmm. because of the workers' resistance. The known stand of the DMK is they are not supporting that. But the activities which they are doing here is no different from the activities of the central government. So the DMK government activities and the union government's activities, activities are more or less the same. In terms of approach to the labor problems, is identical. Hmm. There is no difference at all. It's a strong so, criticism because DMK ideologically it opposes the the BJP, the BJP's policies, the BJP stance. That is what I am saying. Hmm. If you go deeper into it, the DMK or the uh, ADMK or the entire Dravidian uh, uh, succession of ruling, they have. Uh, Uh, local nationalist policy uh, language nationalism central government may have a religious fundamentalism on on political sphere but when it needs to come to labor i do not think they have a different policy there is no uh, i have been a union leader i have been a labor lawyer oh. i have been a senior labor lawyer and during my tenure of 7 years i have maximum number of labor matters were dealt with by me hmm. so in my experience i can say that the governments do not have a, a very well laid um, labor policy and how to deal with the labor so the first question is do you recognize collective bargaining number one collective bargaining means workers right to bargain with the management without any state interference now i always used to say we do not have collective bargaining we have only collective begging hmm. today that's not collective bargaining because you ban the strikes you send the matter to court and the court do not deliver goods within a reasonable period now how do you force the workers to go to court and then uh, start saying no we are always supporting we are giving this we have that board this board that will go these are all welfare measures so how so do you describe in a private management yeah. which is increasingly more privatization 
the only way to uh, secure the conditions of service workers allow the workers to have a collective bargain it may be okay for some social media people to say no 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 they are too much too much all the what what is too much i don't understand this at all the workers decide what is what is reasonable to them i don't think they are asking for the factory to be given to them hmm. they are only saying in commensurate with the price rise they should have a decent standard of living and even to that if you are not able to guarantee i do not think we are not here to only bargain minimum wage minimum wage is the rock bottom of the scale what is now people are fighting is a, a living wage decent wage yeah living wage what is called uh, the reasonable um, living wage which is living wage may be an ideal but then minimum wage which is uh, where you got uh, basic think up uh, making out a living so there are several formulas on that we are not how do, how do you how do you describe the government ha- handling this protest what is your take on it i i remember in 1968 when the hindu paper union was on strike anadure was really taken aback he always react to a situation and then he went to the house of the hindu uh, uh, newspaper owners saying that we have just come to power don't uh, embarrass us please uh, remove the lockout and then during that 63 years 63 days period Uh, things are so bad and anadure went and had a chat with the editor managing editor narsimhan kasuri and then the hindu management removed the lockout so his attempt was to solve the problem without creating embarrassment to the government and he showed absolute neutrality today it is, that is not the situation today they have um, what is called uh, stereotyped answers the that government stereotyped answers you see the minister statement saying that Uh, we are trying to do everything. Everything meaning, meaning what? You, have you registered the union? Have you told the management that in this country it's a fundamental right to have a union? Have you told the management to come and speak on the demands of the workers? Have you allowed the workers to protest? Do you recognize the workers' right to protest? If you have a right to protest, mean that they should be allowed to protest. I remember in one case in um, when they put the lockout in Sri Perbudur layoff. Hmm. Lay off means they say that our demand, our market is bad, so some of the workers are not. One of the requirement under law is that you should report before the gate during the period of lay off, and you may be given a job or not. If you don't come, then be treated as absent. What the management did was, Sri Perbudur is 25 kilometers. They stopped the bus service, they closed the canteen, and they expected the workers to come in. So I passed an order: you must run the bus, you must run the canteen. you may not have production but then it's a requirement under law hmm. so we saw we saw the even the central government when the when the covid came what happened to the migrant workers simply left to feel to fail for themselves in fact when they want to go to their own native place the railways did not run railways finally when there was some method they said the state government should run uh, subsidize the uh, uh, these uh, the labor specials hmm. the shramik specials hmm. but the act interstate migrant act provides that the employer should pay the traveling expenses why not the supreme court insists on that and then the supreme court initially passed a very revolutionary order saying that workers should be paid wages but then no wages came finally they modified the order by saying the labor commissioner will hold talks so the supreme court fell down from their pedestal of giving wages and finally so it only showed neither the government nor the court had any solution to the problem in fact madras high court in the last 20 years have been banning every strike without any justification in fact when bsf the same uh, the same bharat petroleum came to me i said nothing doing we will not interfere in this matter you solve the problem but then there are judges who just ban on a drop of a hat in only nagu in naiveli one judge is appointed a committee hmm. at least they could have done that like that some negotiating committee i don't think they are handling the problem in a way which is required why should the trade union be arrested for addressing workers what will some revolution will come a ordinary economic strike you should support right sir thank you so much for talking to us and putting things in perspective both legally as well as uh, you know from a no, labor point really of view i was really disappointed the minister's statement uh, justifying their action police police have a no role in the in the any industrial dispute unless it goes beyond 
uh, uh, violent hmm. where you got to protect property or uh, or the person that personal security but not otherwise right. where of the drop of hand you send a police and already the police are under the payroll of the management hmm. so even without they are asking they will remove the pandal they will remove the strike it's very sad right sir thank you sir thank you sir